Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us virtually this afternoon, especially on such short notice. Uh, just an idea of flow, we'll have statements from all four individuals, and then we'll open it up for general questions. So we will start with the team's co-owner and governor, Whit Grosbeck. Thanks very much. Uh, this is a bittersweet day um, to commemorate the uh, departure retirement of an all-time great, Danny Ainge, who won championships as a player and won a championship as a head of basketball, unprecedented in Celtics history. One of the truly finest people I've ever met in my life, on and off the court, you epitomize what it is to be a Celtic. And I appreciate the 18 years we had together working side by side and watching you put the team together uh, that led to our championship in 2008. And then it's a sweet day in our ability to announce the promotion uh, of Brad Stevens to become our new president of basketball operations at the Celtics. Brad, a similarly truly outstanding person, human being, caring of others, deeply uh, committed to teamwork and to the Boston Celtics, uh, and on and off the court, wants to bring Celtic pride to the levels uh, that we are accustomed to around here. Uh, Brad and I spoke this morning and committed to one another uh, that we're gonna win Banner 18 or die trying. And that's the way Brad feels about it. That's the way I feel about it. And all of us here at this podium believe that uh, Brad is the person to lead us forward on the basketball side uh, as we go after that lofty goal. So I don't have anything really more to add except thanking Danny again and his family for devoting the last almost two decades to working with us here at the Celtics in the last four decades plus to being one of the ultimate Celtics. Then thanks to you, Brad, and your family for joining us from Indiana, from Butler uh, eight years ago, and now to taking this step, which Frankly, you've been side by side with Danny as the rosters have been put together over the last eight years. It's been an integrated team working on the basketball side. You haven't just been a coach, you've been a, a co-member of all of basketball. And now stepping forward into this role, I appreciate that you're taking on the responsibility and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing it succeed. Next up will be co-owner and alternate governor, Steve Pagliuca. Well, Wick, uh, those are great remarks. And uh, I, I'd step back and say that it's been just a wonderful um, 18 years. Uh, uh, and, and, and previous to that, I met Danny in, 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 I think in the, in the late 80s and have always respected and uh, uh, felt honored he played in Boston. And to have him here at the Celtics for this period of time uh, and, and see all the success and work, work side by side with, with him and Brad has been you know, one of the best experiences of my life and truly um, a bittersweet day. Uh, you know, Danny has meant so much to Celtics pride, the re 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 reinvigoration of the, of the franchise, the championship in 2008, um, winning championships himself. And, uh, and as Wick said, I think we're just honored with his integrity, his approach to the game, his respect for the game, his respect for fans and players, um, you know, we're really going to miss it. And, uh, but the great news is we have continuity with Brad who's been side by side for these last eight years. And so, so uh, um, it's a bittersweet day, but great day for Danny. I think we should re really appreciate everything that he's done for the city of Boston, for basketball and all of us personally here. It's been just a joy to work with him. Next will be Danny Ainge. Well, this is a bittersweet day. Uh, um, we start back 18 and a half years ago um, when Wick and Steve first approached me to come to Boston. And my, I was in a pretty good place. I was playing golf a lot, doing work in TV one day a you week. You still do. <laughs> Not enough. Um, and, um, you know, one thing that really, that they won me over on was the quality of people that I believed that I was going to work for. Um, Wick had a son that was blind and he moved his entire family back to Boston and um, made all sorts of sacrifices. And I really felt a genuine person that was trying to make, not just win a championship and bring Banner 17 on, but also try to make the 
at a better place. And I had served with Steve on a couple of boards of different charities. So I, I knew his philanthropic history and his willingness to serve. And, and uh, one thing that I'm really proud of is just, boy, they have lived up to everything I thought that they would do in the community of Boston, but, uh, and then some. Uh, especially over this last year and all the um, social injustice and and they're putting their money where their mouth is and making Boston a much better place to live. And I'm as proud as that as, as being part of their, their organization and them as anything. Um, the basketball is fun. I love basketball. It's been part of my whole life and um, been in professional sports for 44 straight years. And I've had a lot of ups and downs and fun and, and uh, sad losses. And, um, you know, today is not a great day. Uh, I wish we would have, you know, finished the year on a, on a much better note. Um, but I feel like there's so much hope in, in the Celtics going forward. And um, I'm excited for Brad. I think that Brad, he was born for this. Um, Indiana kid, basketball junkie, smart, lives the game, um, has many resources, um, and has a great staff. Has a great staff uh, with uh, Mike and Austin and Dave and Remy and Jake and Allison and um, just a great staff already in place. And that uh, with Brad's leadership and, and his organization and his work ethic and intelligence, I think it's going to be a great, this is a great day for the Celtics. And I think this is actually even a, a big step forward. And um, I'm looking forward to, to see what, and I'll be hovering <laughs> from a distance probably, but <laughs> sitting with Pags or Wick, uh, uh, yelling at the refs uh, for years to come, but. Um, we'll have an auto receipt for you at the games too, so. But this is a good day for me and for my family my children, uh, I've talked with them through all of this process and uh, we're excited for, you know, the opportunities that uh, I have to spend more time with them and, and not be as stressed and, you know, get out and play golf a little bit more. Finally, Celtics president of basketball operations, Brad Stevens. Uh, well, first of all, um, you know, obviously it's, it's an honor to be trusted with this responsibility um, by WIC, by PAGS, um, and, and then to get a chance to learn from and work, in, work alongside Danny all of this time. My, my, one of my big fears in coming here was the day that Danny decided he would step away um, because when you're in coaching, and, um, you know, you ride the waves of each win, each loss, each bad practice drill, um, each thing that doesn't go your way or does go your way. It's so important to be surrounded by people that, you know, um, have a great understanding of the challenges, um, that truly love um, the joys that come with it, but also find um, great joy in overcoming the toughest of days. And Danny has provided that support as my boss um, of constant empowerment um, for the last eight years. And today, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm, a, I'm not the story. And so I'll let, I'll let this be what it should be. And that is um, a great, great celebration for me of a person who I've learned a lot from um, and who I've really enjoyed working for. And I would sec, I, I know that if any of our assistants were sitting here, um, if anybody on Danny's staff, if anybody around the Celtics were sitting here, they would all say the same thing. Um, I appreciate the, the super kind words um, from Wick Pags and Danny. I understand and am looking forward to um, this new great challenge and responsibility. And, you know, we're driven to compete for championships. And as Danny said, like yesterday, um, it was a hard day. This morning is a hard day. Um, and I know that there's a lot of work ahead. 
So we'll open it up for questions and we'll go to John Corrales. Thanks, uh, Brad, you, you now move into this front office role after coaching these guys, they've all worked really hard for you. They've, you know, you've coached them through some of the worst of the NBA with the bubble and this turnaround and through personal tragedy. Are, are you prepared now to make the difficult decisions that impact these guys' futures as a member of the front office, as running the team? I mean, I think one of the things that I've learned from just being around Danny is you can, you, you have a job to do. You have a responsibility to do. That responsibility is to the Boston Celtics and, and our fans and the pursuit of excellence and the pursuit of the opportunity to compete for championships. But you can also care about people and you can also be there and do everything you can um, to help someone and, um, and care about them when they're here or no longer here. And I think that that's really important. Um, this, you're right, we've been through a lot together. Uh, at the same time, I think I've got a good idea. One of the benefits of, of moving into this new role is I've got a good idea of what we do and don't do well um, and what can accentuate um, some of our you know, um, best players. And so um, there's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of work ahead. I mean, uh, obviously, there is a whole process uh, that we'll um, go through in, in searching for a new coach. There's um, obviously roster decisions that must be made. Um, and there's development within our own team and um, improvement within our own team that has to happen. Um, that said, as, as Danny said, you know, we are in a good place. We have um, a lot of really positive things. And, you know, it's our job to capitalize on that. Gary Washburn. Hey, Danny, it's first, uh, one for Danny. Um, one, is this uh, retirement health related? Two, are you actually retiring? Are you taking a break? Do you plan to work in an NBA front office sometime soon? Um, and this year, did you think or know that was there a point where you said, okay, Danny, like, this is it for me. I'm, this is my last season. Yeah, I mean, I think that when I had a heart attack two years ago, like I started thinking about what I was doing with my life and, you know, what, what are the things that I want to accomplish? I think my life expectancy is um, maybe a little bit less than yours, Gary. Who knows? But um, we'll... I think that, what was the other part of the question? I don't know what my future holds. I don't, I, I don't have any plans. Right now, my goal is to um, get Brad up to speed on the draft. As, like I said, our whole staff will be able to help and all that and, and uh, try to make this transition and uh, get to put the Celtics in as good a place as we can be. And I'll think about the future somewhere in the future. Mark Murphy. Uh, two questions, one for Danny, one for Brad. Uh, Danny, how much did just the rhythm of this season kind of wear down on you and how much did that influence your choice? Yeah, I don't think it did much. Um, I've been through a lot of bad seasons before um, in my lifetime, but I think that, uh, or, you know, not, so we haven't had very many bad seasons, but uh, seasons where we didn't play as well as we hoped. But um, I don't, you know, this is not a, a, a this moment, this season decision. This is well thought out much before that. And um, I've always trusted my instincts and my instincts have told me that this is the right time for me and my family and for the Boston Celtics. And, you know, 18 years ago when I was hired by Stephen Wick, and I mean, it's rare in this business where there's so much public uh, scrutiny of every decision you make where you, you come in and you leave 18 years later and you're closer and better friends than when you came in and you have great respect and a lifelong, uh, that'll never end. And I'm, that's what I'm most proud of is relationships. And um, looking forward to the next chapter.
I'm looking forward to the next chapter for the Celtics and for the for us. Okay, and the other question is for Brad. Um, you now get to pick your successor. What what in your eyes would be the next coach in this team? What what do they have to do? Uh, a lot of former players are now coming into the league as head coaches, for example. Well, one of the things I've learned um, being in coaching, coaching against other great coaches, learning things from the people that you coach against is there's a lot of different ways to coach and there's a lot of different ways to be successful as a coach. Danny and I have talked many times about, you know, we had done things over the last seven or eight years that Danny wouldn't necessarily have done, but when it, when it, when it is in on one page and when it works out, it's, it's, it's the right thing for that group and that team. And so I'm looking forward to really diving into this process. Um, you know, I think that uh, the good news about um, whoever we hire, they don't have to fill Doc Rivers' shoes like I did, and they don't have to fill Danny Ainge's shoes now like I do. Um, so that's a, uh, you know, good news is they just have to, you know, figure out a way to, um, you know, be better than the last guy. Adam Himmelsbach. And you mentioned hey, this is something you'd kind of thought out for a little while now. Could you give us a little sense of the timeline of, of when this started um, being something you started thinking about and how this decision was made, whether this was entirely your decision or was it more from also discussions among Wick and Pags and things like that? Uh, it was my decision. <clears throat> and like I said, it started when I had health issues two years ago in, in the playoffs. And um, I started thinking about them. I mean, you're surrounded by your six children in the hospital and they're saying, hey, you need to quit doing this for work. It's causing you too much stress. And um, that's probably when it started, when I started thinking about it. And then the, these last two years have been tough, like, you know, in the bubble and all the rules and scrutiny and um, protocols that we've had to go through you know, it's not made it as much fun. The job, we haven't been able to get out and have scouts or draft workouts. Um, so the job hasn't been as much fun, but I think that, uh, I don't know if there was a moment in time, but like I said earlier, it was a, I, I trust my instincts. My instincts told me a couple months ago that it was time for me to move on. And um, that's what's best for us. That's what's best for the Celtics. And for the record, Danny came and said, it's his time. It's completely his decision with no support whatsoever uh, from ownership in making that decision. None was, uh, none was offered. No support was offered except for wishing him the best once it became clear that was his decision. And now we've taken a step with Brad. It was in that order. And that's exactly how it happened. Yeah. In fact, we asked him to think about it some more when he first came up to make sure he thought it through. Um, and then I just can't tell you how much we appreciate everything that he's done and, and uh, he'll leave his imprint on, on this organization for years to come. Tim Bontemps. Uh, two questions. First for Brad, um, obviously Brad, you've been a coach for a very long time. Uh, how, how long have you been thinking about taking this job and moving into the front office and, and why is this the right decision for you to make? Well, like I said earlier today, Tim, uh, today is not about me. Um, the, the thought of going into this position, you know, um, was never even a thought because Danny was here and he was the best at it and he's the best to work for. Um, when he decided to move on and retire and, um, you know, and, and go and enjoy more time with his family. And, and um, we talked a little bit about it whenever that was. I don't remember the timeline, but it's been a while now. Six and, years ago. <laughs> and it wasn't six <laughs> years ago. It was, last, it was within the last couple months. And, um, and then it just kind of moved down the road. And, and um, Wick and, and Pags, um, you know, both – talked to me a little bit about it. And then I talked to Wick for a while one day and we decided that that was um, what was best. And, and I told Wick at that moment, my number one thing is for the good of the Celtics. 
Um, I love the Celtics. I want to do what's best for the Celtics. Um, and uh, I really have enjoyed coaching. Um, I loved coaching and I've loved coaching the players both at Butler and here. Um, but this is the new challenge and this is what we need to do um, to hopefully be even better. And, um, you know, again, I think a big part of that is, is hopefully I can use my experience as a coach um, to help not only find a coach, but be a good supportive, uh, empowering person like Danny has been to me of a coach. I guess just to follow up really quick on that, Brad, why, why is it better for the Celtics for you to be the president of basketball operations as opposed to the head coach? Well, um, I think the biggest thing is that I'm passionate about this group of people. I'm passionate about the team that we have. I'm passionate about the people that work in our front office. I'm passionate about our coaching staff. And that's who I've spent all morning with. Um, the people in our sports performance staff. I'm passionate about the whole thing. And I do think that I've got a good insight to our team as Danny now um, steps away. And so um, I feel like I've got a good idea about what we do well, what we don't do as well. And I also think, you know, I've been doing this for eight years. I've been in that locker room for, for, with some of those guys for a long time. And they'll, they'll get a, they'll, they're going to get to play for a great coach with, you know, some similarities maybe, but also some great new fresh perspectives. And I think that that's a good thing. Um, and so I'm looking forward to finding that person because I do think like people can be reinvigorated by that. And, um, you know, I think that when I looked at the big picture and Wick and I really talked about it, it made sense. Like this is a great opportunity to give us a good spark when we're losing, you know, one of the best at his job in the world. Um, and that's something that, you know, we know we all have to step up and meet the next challenge. And, and, and Wick, sort of the same question for you. Obviously, you hired Brad to be your coach. He's had a successful run as a coach. Why is it better for you to move him into the front office as opposed to finding somebody to work with him in that job and have him stay on the sidelines? Yeah, uh, we've all here at this podium uh, gotten to the other three of us have gotten to know Brad over these past eight years and realized the depth of his basketball brilliance. I mean, he's just a, such an insightful person. It comes out in his coaching, but it just comes out in his uh, analysis of the game uh, day in and day out. He put rosters together, obviously, at Butler, which went nearly all the way. He put uh, was at the table here with Danny in the war room and in all of our roster decisions along the way for the eight years, which has had a, a you know, number of notable successes, never went all the way here, but had multiple conference finals and so on, multiple good teams and drafting uh, some young all-stars. And so Brad's fingerprints and DNA are on this uh, team right now in terms of putting it together, helping Danny, Danny was running it. And so uh, for me and for Steve and the rest of ownership, it was, a, it was a thought really of saying, this is really a role that I think Brad's been preparing for his whole life in a way, as a player, as a coach, and now stepping in as Danny stepped from coach to front office, um, thinking that Brad can step from coach to front office. I asked Danny not long ago, what are, what's your top criterion for a successful head of basketball? And he said, someone who can really relate well to the coach and understands the coaching demands. And that's what Brad has to a T. We also have a partnership here with Brad that we've built over these many years. And I feel very confident that he's going to fly high in this role and give it everything he's got. And that's what we're asking him to do. Yeah, I think uh, the, the, the continuity and the excellence that, you know, Brad brings to this job um, is going to be fantastic for us. And as Brad said, uh, um, he can, it, it, the key is having a president of basketball operations that can work with the players and coaches and uh, ownership to, to really win a championship. And Brad is extremely well positioned to do that and has, has been integrated from day one in the operation with Danny and understanding what we're trying to accomplish and how we're trying to accomplish it. So it's, uh, uh, you know, again, a bittersweet date Danny is leaving, but we're lucky to have someone like Brad to step in and continue that legacy and, and that family going forward. Chris Mannix. Hey guys, question for Brad and a question for Wick. Brad, if this went a different direction and 
they hired a new basketball operations president uh, president would you have been happy coaching this team you know for the foreseeable future for sure yeah no doubt and and again it goes back to you know i love basketball um i've loved my time as a coach and i also you know want what's best for the celtics and want to do my part into ultimately helping us achieve what we want to achieve. I mean, that's the, that's the driver um, for me. Um, this this um, ownership group, um, Danny, have um, treated me unbelievably. And, um, and this organization means a lot to me and my family. And so, yes, whatever they would have asked me to do, certainly. And I would have done it, you know, with great, um, you know, with the, with the same enthusiasm that I have. This side, this now is a great new opportunity. I'm invigorated by it. I'm looking forward to it. Like I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, I know there's a lot of work to do. Um, and, I, and I will say, and I, and I think it's really important to say, like Danny mentioned it earlier, you know, we're set up not only from a player standpoint, but we've got great coaches that are in the building, but, you know, Mike Zarin, Austin, and that whole entire group, like they are going to make this transition very easy because they are high, high level um, at what they do. They know um, the ins and outs of everything that needs to be known. And, you know, I'm looking forward to working with them, um, leaning on their expertise as I transition leaning on Danny's expertise as he trans as he transitions and going from there. And just Wick to, to ask you, you obviously have a lot of uh, confidence in Brad for this job, but when Danny comes to you and tells you he's going to walk away, is any thought given to kind of a national search and to branch out and look at a deeper level across the league? Well, what we uh, knew, what I really felt and what we decided was we'd wait till the end of the season to do anything if we went that route and then talking to Brad one day and said, I wonder if you want to let's run a search together uh, for president. I said, and you might want to throw your name in. And from my standpoint, that's when it started. I think Brad and Danny actually had started tossing it around years ago casually, but they never yeah. filled me in. Um, and it is that, that, you know, that was just, uh, it's always probably been a possibility, but so the idea of Brad uh, taking over became, it's a natural promotion from within somebody we've worked with for eight years. And so one person's leaving and we have one job opening and it's a very important job opening of head coach of the Boston Celtics. It's following, you know, Bill Russell, Casey Jones, uh, Tommy Heinsohn, uh, Brad Stevens, Doc Rivers. It's following an illustrious group and, um, and we're getting started today on that search. Jared Weiss. Uh, question for Brad first. Um, there was a period of time recently in the league when uh, teams were having coaches also fill that same GM position or director position. Was that something that you considered or something you weren't interested in considering just how taxing that whole workload would be? And then also just for Wick and Pags, was that something you considered? Uh, I think it's I think it's too much. Um, and I think that, like I said earlier, all of my intentions, energy, and focus needs to be on doing this job well, and then hiring a great coach and, and trusting that they will do their job well. And I think that, um, everybody will benefit, um, from that approach. And, uh, to me, that would have been a lot. Um, to be able to do both of those things. I know some people have done it and some people have done it really well, um, but it's a, that would have been a great challenge. I told him yesterday, he better find a good coach or he will be doing them both. <laughs> the, uh, At they, the Celtics, those are two separate jobs. Yeah, and then when we, when we uh, 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 purchased Celtics in 2003, we studied this and at that time, uh, there wasn't even as much statistics as there are now and, and we, we tripled the size of the, of the basketball operation, uh, the front office. Uh, and, and so it's a gigantic job um, doing the two jobs. I can't imagine uh, being able to do those two jobs in today's world. 
with managing the stat people, you know, managing the health, um, managing all the things that you have to manage. I, I think it's two hundred hour week, you know, type jobs, and that's how these guys have, have worked at it, and that's why we've been so successful. And and it's also fantastic to have a, someone who's coached to, to, because they understand how hard the coaching job is. Um, it's extremely hard job to get out there for those eighty two games plus the playoffs and and uh, and all the ups and downs of that. So. Um, definitely two jobs in my mind. Time for a few more questions. We'll go to Brian, Rob. Hey, uh, just uh, two questions for Brad here. First, um, you've spoken highly again about the, the mem other members of the Celtics front office here. Um, during this transition, do you expect to potentially add anyone else to help with that group moving forward? Or are you ha happy with that group in place? And as a second question, what's the biggest thing from after all these years of working with Danny, what's the biggest thing you'll kind of take from him in his role as you transition here? Let me answer the first one first. So I, the Danny is, uh, and, and I was really fortunate to work for a great boss at Butler and Barry Collier. And my biggest fear in leaving Butler was being able to find someone that would even come close to being what Barry was to me and, and, found it from day one right here. And that is he empowers you every day to do your job. Well, um, he gives you confidence to do your job. Well, um, he challenges you, but he also supports you. And that is not just the head coach. That is the video coordinators that are the scouts that are the people in the analytics department that are the people in the, in the training room. Um, he has a great balance of, demanding excellence, but also um, having great perspective and being awfully supportive. Um, and so I, I think that that is the thing that, you know, as a, as a person that will be in my position, I think that that's what I take as, you know, I want people to feel that way. Um, and then with regard to the front office, you know, I've spent a lot less time thinking about the structure of the front office and what we need to do. I will obviously dive into that. I think that there are good people in place. Um, I also think that there are a lot of priorities now that need to be tackled um, with obviously hiring a head coach being one. My, the, the majority of my focus today and tomorrow is making sure I sit down with my coaching staff and you know, we talk about how you know, their next steps and when what we can do because that's the the biggest challenge in any of these transitions are the people that are affected by it um and that uh and, and we have an unbelievable group of people that have done a great job here and you know it's my hope that you know we could have um people around for for longer but at the same time um if not we want to help them in any way we can so that's my initial focus i'll get to the front office um alignment and what we need to do um, as I get more into it. Tom Westerholm. Hey, Brad, there was a, a report earlier. Just how much did coaching in the bubble sort of take out of, out of you personally? And was that part of your decision to kind of reevaluate? No, I mean, I thought coaching and playing in the bubble, those, those were some of the most rewarding basketball moments that I've ever been a part of um, the bubble in itself was hard on everybody, but that was well documented. But I think like I haven't seen basketball played at a higher level than when I was down there. Uh, and I think that it was largely due to the fact that we were there every day. We had gym space every day, right down the hallway for three hours a day. You could work, you could practice, you could become great as a team. You could do things that, in this past year, you weren't able to do from a from a practice perspective. Um, this is a glimpse into Brad's mind. Yeah. He wants everybody in one place, yeah. 365, 24 <laughs> seven, just playing basketball. Yeah, so the new, the new bubble. So this is what um, this is hiring a new coach will give us a great opportunity to hire somebody that I think will, again, um, be great at the job, um, be better than the person he replaces and, you know, be a new, fresh voice with new, fresh perspective. I think that's great. Um, and so it has nothing to do with my own um, where I was with coaching. Coaching has been awfully good to me. 
And uh, I'm very thankful for every day that I got a chance to do it. Our final question this afternoon, we'll go to Mark D'Amico. Hey, Danny, this one's for you. And first and foremost, congratulations on a great run here with the team. Um, you have a unique perspective in that you've negotiated with Brad multiple times on his first contract here on multiple contract extensions since then. How would you categorize Brad as a negotiator? Well, I haven't really negotiated with Brad. I've negotiated with Tracy. So <laughs> I'd say she's, she's, a, she's, she's a great negotiator. <laughs> she worked out great contracts for Brad, but um, I'm not worried about that. I think Brad will, he, he's, he's much smarter than I am. He'll figure all that out. And like I said, he's got a lot of people that will help him and get him through that. And we have a great, a great front office, uh, downtown office with Bill Reisfelder and Rich led by Rich Gotham and um, surrounded by a lot of great people. And I just, I'm not worried about any, any of those elements of his capabilities. He's uh, like I said, he's smart and he's hardworking and he'll figure out what he doesn't know. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. And we'll wrap it up right there.